Uh, internet problem, Comptar Productions presents what will be a very special recorder. Now I press stop, but it might still be getting this, I don't know. Okay. You can see there is a machine right here, which is a very nice tape recorder. You can see the wording right there. It says Opticord. Anyway, let's remove the top cover. Now it does have hinges. I'll show you how this works. The uh, hinges simply hinge on these little um, wire pieces, like little metal things like that, and it will insert into that hole and lock down, and then to get it out you have to move the slider here up and then pull it out. And it has two of those connectors on the back for the um, the latches so you can put on the hinges to take off or put on the door. It also has the same system on the bottom of the recorder to remove it to replace batteries and also for servicing the recorder. I want to show you the unique way that this recorder uh, will hold the reels in place. If you'll notice, this does not have the three spokes that stick out to the side to catch into the uh, spokes on the reel. Instead, it has these little uh, plastic wings or pieces that simply will just be to snap the reel in place. So. It's held in by friction like that. And I don't know if you can notice, but on this wee reel I put some uh, scotch tape in the middle portion because the sizing on this is such that some reels, it's so tight, it's not a good idea to put the reel on. Other reels, it holds on just right, but this reel, the hole was just slightly too big and the reel would be loosely on there, not held in place at all. So I had to put tape in in between the hole inside and the um, shaft in order to keep the reel to be held on there good. The maximum reel size this recorder can use is 11 centimeter reels or about four and a half inch I think around there reels. I don't have any 11 centimeter reels, but I do have 10 centimeter or 4 inch reels. And this will nicely hold 4 inch reels, but it will not, of course, accept 5 inch reels. So it is one of the less common 4 inch reel to reel tape recorders, not nearly as common as the uh, 3 inch, 3.5, and, and 5 inch reel to reel portable tape recorders. So it's a pretty interesting thing to note right there. And anyway, um, this machine is, the brand is Loe Opta, give some close-ups. I may not be pronouncing it very well, but you can see right there. And um, it's called the Opticord and it's model number 412. Of course the lighting over here isn't the greatest because I keep casting a shadow, which is ridiculous but also I have the oh yeah I need to tell you some more information this machine is made in Germany and this particular one was manufactured in 1962 but this model came out in 1961 and I found out on the site radiomuseum.org which I'm not a member I'm only a, di a guest so I can't be allowed to see the pictures in full size without paying, which is very annoying.
I don't know why they just... I, I wish they didn't make it to pay because I'd love to become a member if I didn't have to pay. But anyway, I saw on that site some information about this recorder. And one of the information said that um, this particular model recorder was the first model recorder to have a built-in AC to DC power supply in which you could plug it into the... I know what I'm saying is one that uses batteries and plugs into the wall where the uh, power supply is built in. So that's pretty interesting right there. Here I have the operating manual. Nice orange color. And here's the back of the manual. You'll be dying to read what it says and you won't see it on the video and you'll be really annoyed by that. But I'm sorry, that's just how it is. I, mean, I guess if you really, really are really dying to see what the manual has to say, any of you YouTubers out there who are dying to no end to read every single thing and see every single thing in the manual, then maybe I could scan it and upload a separate video, which would be a, quote, slideshow showing the stuff in the manual provided they're even high enough resolution on the video itself for you to even be able to make out what it says. Anyway, let's out for, without further ado, we can show some operation on this recorder. I know it's been a long time since I've uploaded a video, and even longer since I've done one on a tape recorder. I think the last tape recorder presentation video I did was, believe it or not, the Grundig TK-1. Um pretty insane that isn't hasn't been as many uh, videos as it used to be in the not so distant past but I may do some more videos later on of some other recorders I have lying around that I haven't made videos of yet anyway this didn't have the original microphone when I, when I got it so um, I'm using this little Grundig microphone which came with the Grundig TK46 which is the, the machine is not in that great of shape and if I could ever get it to work right it would not be an easy task but anyway let's go ahead and put it in uh, reverse record and play at the same time and have the pauser ready this is the pause right here so you have to if you want to start up you have to hold it down because if you press stop, the pause gets released. I want to show that on a close-up, actually. Here's the pauser. So, um, if I were to go into play, With this. I can pause it. But once I press stop, the pause resets. So, when I go into recording, I have to press not only record and play at the same time but also hold down the pause that is if I want to have it paused at first to set levels which is normally what I'll be doing and to wait for the motor to be starting at the right speed and everything so hold the pauser press record and play at the same time now I want to give a, a close-up of the uh, recording level I tube yes I tube although this is a solid state recorder using six transistors that is, five transistors for the amplifier, one transistor for the motor speed control, and interestingly enough, even though it is AC bias, they don't have a separate bias oscillator transistor. What I could tell from what it looked like in the schematic, which was inside the recorder luckily, um, was that the push-pull output part of the amplifier, when is when the machine is put into record, it's disabled from amplifying and instead switched in to be the bias oscillator uh, transistors or transistor I didn't pay enough attention to see whether it used both transistors or not but um, and then it come the audio seems to come off after the first three transistors in the amplifier and it goes into the grid of the seeing eye tube from what I could see in the schematic actually maybe that's not where it actually records from because it does go through diodes as well so I'm having to record, hold the recorder up at an angle so that it can uh, the camera that's on the tripod can look at it good 
if it overdrives the exclamation looking thing touches all the way to the dot or at least almost all the way to the dot and if it's a, a good level it's more or less like this as you can see here this is a, a pretty good uh, recording level and then the other side level doesn't do it very much at all hello 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 okay so I'm going to begin recording I have a, my level set uh, pretty good now I'm now making a recording on the Loe Opta Opticord 412 reel to reel 4 inch tape recorder. Okay, well, we made the recording, so let's go ahead and play it back. Go with this. I'm now making a recording on the Loe Opta Opticord. 412 reel to reel 4 inch tape recorder running at the only speed that it runs at 3 and 3 fourths inches per second. This is a two track mono recorder, meaning it can have a side A and a side B, and that's it. I wish it was four track mono. Heck, I wish all portable mono reel to reels were four track mono, but that's just not how it is. Anyway, it's a very nice recorder, and the, uh, it uses the DM71 iTube for the recording level, which is the, believe it or not, the exact same uh, iTube that the uh, Grundig TK1 uses as well. Also an interesting thing to note is the motor that this recorder uses to drive the transport is the same kind of motor as is used in the Grundig TK-1. If you saw the video of the Grundig TK-1, you may remember I had to hold it at an angle. And then if you saw me re respond to a comment, I think, it was that I had got the problem fixed. What I had done to fix the problem in the Grundig was, uh, because I had to run it at an angle, the shaft would be in a certain way, and if the shaft shifted too much, um, it would the motor would start to squeal and would lose regulation. Um, because of the friction. So I had put um, a metal bracket and a little piece, a plastic piece on the Grundig that would hold the, um, that would push against the shaft just enough so that it would not go into the squealing zone as I call it. And that fixed the problem with the Grundig TK1. Well this recorder had that same basic problem. It wasn't as drastic on this recorder, but the recorder would be a little bit unstable on the speed and it would do some squealing and um, I did that same kind of fix just earlier today on this recorder, the Lowe Optical Optical 412 and lo and behold it fixed the problem and the speed is regulated pretty well now. And also I had I oiled the motor as well. But other than that, this recorder is um, operating in all the original parts. The original electric, electrolytic capacitors are still good enough for this machine to run properly. The ones in the amplifier tested to be fairly well on the ESR meter. One of them was a little bit, maybe it, maybe not as good, but they were, well, maybe that was the filter capacitor. But it was good enough. I run it on AC and it doesn't have a 60 hertz hum. So it, it, it does good. And, um... Now to read you some technical specifications out of the manual. Um, the AC bias frequency of this recorder is 55 kilohertz. The audio output of the amplifier is one watt with 10% or less total harmonic distortion. Actually it just says total distortion in the manual. Um, it says uh, the frequency response of this recorder is a good, um, where is it on there? The frequency response goes from 50 hertz to 12 kilohertz. So it's a pretty good recorder. A lot uh, broader frequency response than a lot of my other portable rear-to-rear -rear recorders. Um, and it 
Uh, and as you'll be hearing in this recording, especially with this Grundig microphone being of very high quality, you'll be hearing the extreme crispness of the audio and good bass and good treble. It just it has a really, really good sound quality to it, and I really like it a lot. And right now I'm, of course, running it off batteries. It uses uh, five D-sized batteries for a 7.5-volt system, but of course also it will run successfully off AC. Um, of course, the cord is hardwired to the recorder, and to run it on batteries, you plug the plug of the cord into a socket inside the recorder itself, which simply uh, completes the uh, circuit for the batteries to then run the recorder. Anyway, um, this was a long recording, and I know that this video will be one of those long, drawn-out, constant talking, um, time-wasting, time-taking, big file on the computer, long upload, uh, maybe not long upload, but not that long upload. Actually, usually the uploads don't take that terribly long. But basically what I'm trying to say is I take annoyingly forever on the videos and whenever I keep talking and talking and talking and stuff on the videos about this and this and that and that, it annoys me! Anyway, I uh, hope you... Oh yeah, then of course I still keep on going because then I need to set the level all the way up and to see how it does at arm's length, or arm's length and then room's length distance. I'd like to do that. So anyway, without further ado, the level is up all the way and I'm speaking at about arm's length distance although the microphone's not in my hand and now I'm somewhat across the room and I'm now seeing how well it picks up from across the room and you may be able to hear the motor still does squeal a little bit but it's like, hopefully not as bad as it was before Anyway, hope you enjoyed this recording. I'm going to stop the recording now. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that recording. Long time taking recording. And next I'll be showing how it records music. Okay, before I show it playing music that I recorded onto this recorder from YouTube, I will um, show you how fast it rewinds and fast forward. Pretty nice, eh? Without further ado, let's hear how it recorded music. Very good sound quality. And before I'm done with this video, you knew what this was, I'm sure, tone. And this is pause. And you knew this was volume, probably, in the V. This little switch here is uh, switches between radio and microphone inputs. Um, so you can 
have a mic and a radio plugged in at the same time. And also the radio uh, part will also give a line level output. So um, you can easily switch between mic and radio uh, um, for recording purposes with that switch. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, the very long video of this very nice German made reel to reel tape recorder. Quick note this recorder also can run on either. 115 or 220 volts and it can um, also the uh, switch on the side next to the three din jacks simply is a speaker on off switch